Hey, welcome to The Spotlight with Troy Rawlings. Our guest today is business owner Nancy Sexton. Nancy Sexton is the owner of The Muse Rooms in Burbank and in North Hollywood. We welcome Nancy Sexton. I'm sort of an aperitif, as you would say. Does that mean appetizer? Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You can't, use the, you can't use the big words on me, Nancy. I don't know all that. It's actually shorter than appetizer, but no, let's not get into semantics. Oh, okay. what, what is that, French? Aperitif? Oh, come on now. I don't know. I'm telling you, I don't know. Yes. Is it French? Uh, I believe. I, look at me. Oh. I'm being a wise ass. I okay. don't even know what it means. <laughs> For those that don't know... Nancy. Well, I know it is in English. <laughs> okay. For those that don't know, this young lady, Nancy Sexton, outside of being... A music artist that you can Google. Uh, she's actually the co- <laughs> yeah. the co-owner of the Muse Rooms in Burbank and North Hollywood. Yes, That's the Muse. It, it well, it, for us it is. It's a very big deal because if, for those that don't know what Muse Rooms are, they are they are the I can't say the are are you guys the newest in the area? Um, no, we are not, but we are the only co-working space in North Hollywood. And then we we're, we have some company here in Burbank, but, and other co-working spaces are, you know, all, I shouldn't say other, I should say most co-working spaces are fantastic, you know? Right. And the people that run them are, you know, everyone, I would say that as a community, it's, it's a really fantastic community to be part of. And I would just say that the Muse Rooms, we do something truly unique that is not corporate. Um, we we really are trying to be a major disruptor in the world of co-working. I don't like to diss anyone, but I would definitely like to say that I love what we do, right. you know? They're the most eclectic, artistic, comfortable co-working space I've ever been in. I'll say that. Okay, well cool, I'll take it. Very professional, still very professional, very accommodating. And um, just since I've been here, and I've only been here a couple months now, We've been, we've been here. This is where we've opened. Actually, our LA Radio Now studio and training facility is here. And we were talking about some of the different ones. Like we work, we work as the mammoth. We work as the one a lot of people may be familiar yeah, with. Yeah, they, they paved the way. I mean, they're, they are, listen, they're a billion dollar company. Yeah. I mean, clearly they know what they're doing. They just bought the Lord and Taylor building in New York. You know, oh, wow. And That's a big building. And the whole building. Wow. And instead of, you know, you can have, because in music rooms, you have coffee and some snacks and different things, and they have different special events here. But they're like uh, cafes and stuff. It's like Starbucks has a place in there, and McDonald's have bought a place inside the Lord and Taylor. And then, you know, it's an office, but it's it's amazing. It's yeah. Amazing. Uh, one of but we do not stores. have that here. No, no, no. They have great coffee, though. They do have great selections. We do. We, we have a... <laughs> Different ways to make coffee. And well, no, listen, I'm a, a huge coffee connoisseur, so it was really important to me to have a, not just have like the standard Keurig, but, um, you know, to be able to make a fresh pot of coffee with fresh ground coffee. So we have beans and you can do the Keurig and... See, most people you know. are like, why are they talking about coffee? Because she just upped her her clientele 50% by saying we have ground coffee. Well, yeah. People, we're fiends for coffee. So what, what gave you the idea to get involved with doing co-working spaces. Well, because you and your husband have a hand in entertainment. Yeah. You have a hand in writing and stuff like that. What made you go this route? Well, it's um, as a writer, I've been writing with a with a partner for a number of years, and I started writing on my own. I sold a couple projects, and I was just um, uh, you know, as you know, entertainment is a yeah, you, know, you take your hits, you know, you take the good with the bad. Right. And um, as much as I enjoy that, I also enjoy some stability. And outside of being a writer, I've been a personal trainer and involved in fitness for like 20 some years and had a couple TV shows. And that was cool while it lasted. But when you get to the point as a personal trainer that you don't give a shit if somebody's fat, it's time to get out, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, let's talk real. I mean, seriously. Yeah, so. I wanted to bounce out of that, and, um, and and I laugh because I still have five, you know, I still have five, <laughs> five diehard like, clients what? that what? I got. are all like, what do you mean I'm fat? Um, <laughs> Just give me five more. <laughs> yeah, so basically what happened was I just came to a point where, you know, as a 
as you get older, you know, you start considering like, what are you doing? You know, you start really reflecting on where am I investing my time right. during the day? And I have always, always um, only done what I want to do. I've always done that. I mean, you know, I mean, outside of like my first little stint in New York of managing restaurants and stuff, but even that I really truly enjoyed. Um, I didn't hate myself, you know what I mean? Like right. I didn't, I wasn't like, I was never one of these waiters or, or bartenders that would show up and just be like embarrassed right. about what I did. I just was like, you know what, if, if, if it's worth my time doing, then I'm gonna be the best damn one of them. And right. I always was, right. you know, I always did show up and just try to be the best at whatever I was doing. So I've always made those kind of choices in my life to only do what I want. And I came to this point where I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. And I was really frustrated. And I said to my husband, and I'm a huge fan of universal energy and right. you know, you put out, you know, you get you get what you put out, right? right? So I was like, I am gonna just hang tight and I'm gonna trust that something's gonna come along. I got an email on August 13th of 2015 from a uh, some co-working writing space over in Brentwood. Mm. Um, because I'm, you know, I get all these emails for writing and right, this, right. all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, what is this place? Now, keep in mind that I have, with my fitness background, I managed gyms in Manhattan for a very long time, like 10 years, right? So I was like, man, hmm, this, this business model is very interesting. How much are they charging here for this? And okay, wait a second. This is so similar to a gym. Yeah. Yeah, it's really exactly. just a gym for being self-employed, well, right? right? Except there's no equipment, and yeah. I could create this really no cool space. Risk yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, I don't have in a, there's no stink, no you know. No fault, no <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, and so in and, and uh, I was like, wow, this is really, this is crazy. So I, I got really excited about it. You know, I called my husband and, and I was like, hey, I want to do this, and he was like okay let's uh, he got behind me right away he saw he just like lights were bells and whistles you know it was like do, 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 we must do this so um i wrote up a business plan um and then we flew to colorado i remember it was five days later i, I started writing up the business plan and uh we flew to colorado to see the foo fighters because uh <laughs> my favorite other band uh was opening for them and uh uh Anyway, so we went out there and uh, Tim's uh, aunt and uncle, who are really smart in business, we were pitching the idea to them. And, you know, when you start pitching an idea to people, it really helps you develop it, right? Right, right. Especially as a writer and stuff. In this town, come on, everybody's pitching something, right? right, right. You get to the point where you're like, shut up. I don't hear you. I don't yeah, care. Like, uh, go, pitch, go pitch over there. Right, right. Don't pitch to me. <laughs> I heard before, kid. Yeah, see? Yeah, really. <laughs> Mustache come from the cigar. Now, hey, I'll see you. She's a, she's a hot dame, see? She's got an idea. So I said right, to my husband. <laughs> she knows a guy who does a thing, see? <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, we, we just like, um, we developed the idea some more and I came back, I finished the business plan and uh, I found a space. And the next thing I knew, October 1st, we took occupancy. I mean, I got my funding and uh, I, I got, uh, it was really funny. I had, uh, I wanted like, I was like 80 grand or 90 grand to open the first location. And right. this was going to give me a nice comfort zone, right? I got uh, a third of that. Right. And I was like, well, what am I going to do? I was like, well, I, I am not going to not do it. Let's just do it. And let me say, let me say this, because I'm so thankful to, I, I didn't come in at the beginning, but I came in with enough time to see, like when I first met Nancy, she came to the door. I was like, oh, those are some slick pants you got on with all the paint on it. And I looked at her hands and her hair. I was like, oh, she's actually doing the painting. <laughs> oh, that's right. You know what? And then yes. the great thing about those jeans is everyone loves it. Well, I love them. Yeah, and then I got... some jeans yeah. like that. And I'm like, dude, those are hot. He's like, yeah, man, you know, JoJo. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, they, well, they, they are hot until I got so fat I ripped them out. That's one of the things about doing construction, doing your own construction. <laughs> she it's, swears she's the heaviest thing. Yeah, so. well, but well, no, I mean, I'm just saying that, like, they were they were really groovy, but I can't... But I, you know what I could have done? I could have just painted the skin on the insides of my legs and no one would have known. <laughs> If you're wondering, you're listening to Nancy Sexton. She's the co-owner. Her and her husband own the Muse Rooms in Burbank and North Hollywood and future locations coming. We wanted to talk, I had to get her in here to talk more about 
this co-working space and how she got involved with it. She saw the business model, said it was a great idea, but what I, what's so amazing to me about what they do and how they do it is uh, the comfort level. Um, they're people people. You guys are people people. You love people. You can say you love people. I do. And, and you're hands on. That was one of the things that when I started this model, um, with doing the, people wanted me to do a internet radio station or radio station in 2008 when I moved here. The people I was coming from. Mm -hmm. They was like, do you want to California? It's a great mile. I'm not trying to be a GM of a station. Until I saw a business model with, I'll give a, I always give a shout out, latalkradio.com. And it was so impressive. And the thing that got me was that the owner was like you guys. Every time I wanted to do a tour, he gave me the tour. He was always there. And I started realizing that I don't even think this guy has a radio, Sam has a radio background, but he knows people and he knows his business mm -hmm. model so well. He yeah. He knows so well. Well, that's a, you know, and, and, and don't get me wrong. I did not just create the business um, because I thought it was a good business platform. Right. I saw it as a way that I could do what I love and help, you know, everybody in here is, is doing what they love. I mean, we do not have members that are like, oh, I hate my job. Right. <laughs> you know, they're not, that's not even on their radar because they're just so busy um, figuring it out. Like right. we all are, right? And that's one of the greatest things about being an entrepreneur or being a small business person. And even if you're just a writer, right? And, and that's really funny because a lot of writers don't think of themselves as entrepreneurs or whatever, but you're putting it out there, man. Right. You if know, you're investing. I'm a freelance writer. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah, you know, you're saying. investing. You're investing your time and your creative energy into something that you're hoping will pay off. Right. You know, and that's um, and that is risky. And a lot of people out there don't do it. They don't do it, you know, and it's so anyway. It's so when I looked at the business model, and I want to make sure that people understand that it's it's. It, I didn't know going into it how much I would love this business. You know, I, did, I had no idea. I didn't know that I was going to, well, I, 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 I work my butt off, right, to make it happen. But at the same time, it's, it's, not, um, it's not a burden. Right. It's awesome. You know, maybe 20 years from now, I'm going to be like, we have this conversation you know, about, you know I'll through, have a different attitude. But, and income and things yeah. like that. But I was like, I see you guys. It, it's... It's not like you just invested in something that was already operating. You guys built this and you built the image of like, I know there are going to be people that want this model because of, I told you when I first came in, it reminded me of my favorite restaurant in Baltimore. Mm. And and that's what hooked me because I, from the outside, I was like, oh, well, I'm thinking it's nobody really there. She called, I called her and she's like, oh, you can come this day to come by. I totally forgot. I went to WeWork. I'm in my head. I'm doing stuff with Zoe, getting her lunch together. I looked at my watch and was like, 10 o'clock. I had a meeting and came over here. And it was funny because she was showing the place to a guy. Who oh, yeah. The door. I thought that guy was like the manager or something. Very big dude not look no eye contact i was like oh man. no he was sketched the energy dude. was terrible he was sketched he was he was like <laughs> i'm no. thinking he worked with her until she gave me this look like like help me yeah <laughs> help me. this guy's big and i don't think i could take him <laughs> if something happens <laughs> so i was like i was like oh oh you gotta be able to read eye contact when the woman gives you that eye contact like <laughs> i did too man i was like i was like he has dandruff on his ankles. Get him out of here. This is horrible. Bad senses of rosacea. <laughs> Cut to, he's he like rosacea now. But excellent rosacea fighting with psoriasis. It was crazy. No, but it was, it, that was, it, that was like. It was, it was pretty bad. Yeah, and, but, and, and, and thank you. He could be listening. Oh, well, hey, hey, listen, if he <laughs> is listening, we're, if he is listening, game. yeah, if he is listening, we're doing him a favor. Send him some lotion. So, no, I think, but but I, I appreciate the fact that you gave me a chance after that because had it been me walking in here seeing that dude leaving, I would have been like, uh, you, yeah. You are were, were expressive enough with your eyes. See, I'm a very I'm a very attentive person when it comes to people's feelings and emotions, and you gave me that. I know I gave you the <laughs> deer in the yeah. deer in the headlights. <laughs> Like, and then you look at him like, like as if he, you like, know, if somebody yeah. looks at him, you all right, man? It's like, yeah. yes. And she looks at you and looks at them real quick and looks back at you. You know something's yeah. wrong. So it's that's, like, a, that's the kind of tour I do walking backwards because I'm not turning my back on that guy. That's <laughs> bad. So, yeah, she does have discretion. She It's totally up to her discretion whether or not if you're spooky or look crazy, whether or not she's going to. 
Yeah, I know. And I and that's the thing is like that's actually a question a lot of people ask me um, is do we accept everyone? No, we no. do not. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because clearly you had a great deal on the table yeah. recently, and it was just some things that were that would that we, we talked about it. It was some things that would that would put other things into place in danger. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that it was a danger like these people were dangerous, but uh, younger people with money who may not care about the situation. Yeah, it would mm-hmm. be too disruptive. Right. And, and, and disruptive. Uh, yeah, and that's a thing. They may say, it's yeah. the place, is nice, is quiet. We're yeah. very respectful to everybody. Yeah. And you have offices and workspace. Yeah, like we do. Don't yeah, and and As much of. Yeah, a lot of a lot of places are they're either one or the other. I mean, and it's it's really hard to find a nice merriment of both, you know, or or actually all three elements. Because here at the museums we have hot desks, dedicated desks, and office spaces, and then we have uh, rentable boardrooms that are rentable for the for non-members as well. Right. Um, and so, yeah, you, you know, we we try to be very fair about who becomes a member and. And clearly, we don't want anyone who's disruptive. I mean, and um, yeah, we, we have, like I said, we have turned people away or um, just people who don't get the whole, you, who you can see um, are just clueless in who they are and how they move and how loud they are or, you know, and they're, and you know that somebody's going to be complaining about them. Right. So right. why even bother? And I'm not going to do that. And it's not fair to the current members because we are a, a community of of like-minded people and we want to attract those kind of people. Luckily, I haven't had, and we've been open for two years and uh, math, great. Two years and four months. (laughs) Help me out, math. (laughs) How many fingers do I have? (laughs) So yeah, no, I mean, we, you know, in two years and four months, I had to turn two people away and cancel one membership. Right. And that's, that's it. So, I think that's a pretty good amount of of cool people coming through. Right. And I and we talked about this the other day that actually this it, with all the crazy stuff that happens in our world and you can you can really get swooped up into the negative, right? right? It's I will tell you that this business has re it, re um stored my faith in humanity mm-hmm. as a people that there are really, really wonderful people out there. And that's what, that's what I, I think I was already, because I was coming from a co-working space, nice, nice building, everything, that had more of a business atmosphere, but I knew the owner, very cool. And I saw WeWork Next, and I was like, oh, I love the networking of this, mm-hmm. but the space sucked. <laughs> no offense for the amount of money you pay at WeWork. It was like, oh my God. And, but the networking we work was like, oh man, and all the amenities, it was like, man, it's really worth being in this kind of atmosphere. So I see it's it's the atmosphere, it's everything. But when I came to Muse Room, it was like, you know, finding the, the right bed if you're Goldilocks. It's like, it was like, ah. It was, it was the merger of both. It was, it was eclectic, comfortable, great space, great people. And I love the fact that you'll come in the museum room and people are kind of dressed casual or even sometimes dress up, whatever. But you never know what people do until you talk to them. But everyone's open to talk. And then you find out, oh my God, I'm around people that are, you know, not to name drop, but you have a young lady who's in Forbes. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right next to you, you have a young man over there that, that works with the hotel industry. And he's in his t-shirt and he's talking to you like it's all. The networking and the people that are involved here are great. So get in the middle of this because we're not finished yet, but I want you to give some information. How can people get in contact with you? If they're here in the SoCal area, in the Valley, North Hollywood, Burbank, and they want to get in contact with the Muse Rooms, how can they do it? Well, the easiest thing to do would be to just call us. Um, I pretty much... I answer the phone (laughs) all the time. Just don't call me. I don't get it when people call at like 11 o'clock on a Sunday. Like, no. Then I'm not, come on, seriously. But uh, no, the number is 818-823-4717. Again, that is 818-823-4717. You can also email us at info at themuserooms.com. And for those of you who are listening and you think we're saying news... It is not news, it is muse, as in an inspiration. And that's T-H-E-M-U-S-E-R-O-O-M-S dot com. And um, the other, you know, if you do just come by the space, 
uh, you're going to see a sign outside that says, hey, thanks for coming by, but we are appointment only. So it's, it's important to have an appointment when you come, but just don't, just please just don't come by because what I hate is as, as, a, as a business owner, especially in this world of, of co-working and uh, trying to make sure that people have uh, everything they need, it's my job to make sure that you're happy. And one of the things I hate is, is if somebody comes by and they don't get to get a tour because I'm not there, and then mm. that's a, that starts it off just bad. Right, right. It's a disappointment that they can't take the, the tour, and I really like to make people happy, so please just don't come by. Let us know that you're coming by. That way I can uh, be prepared and, and show you exactly what it is you need. And, and also, it's, it's appointment only if you, if you didn't get that. It's appointment only because when you walk in, you're walking into the space, meaning that there are people here that are working, and, and you don't... It, it makes it easier. And, and I mean, that's even a force of sometimes there are bigger tours or something. You maybe get an email, hey, I'll be doing a tour today. And it, I mean, and I'm in the office, so it doesn't really, even though I can see everything that's happening. So, yeah. So well, the other reason, too, is that the door's locked because we are members right. only. You got to have, right. yeah, you got to have a key card to get. We don't have like a lobby. Like if you do go to another co working space, uh, you probably walk in and they have a, somebody who greets you. We don't have that just because. We're not set up that way. We're just a different business model. And someone asked me before, uh, they just asked me the other day, but Birdmake actually, she does have event space here, but it's private. <laughs> so you do have an area where people can use for special yes. events, certain certain kind of special events. Not yeah. Only. Yeah. Like, well, for example, um, we do events here. Uh, we we'll put it like this. You can be a member or be a non-member and still have an event here. Right. Um, training. Uh, yeah. Networking event. Yeah, and like I said before, you can rent the boardroom if you're a non-member, but you could also have an event here. Like, but some of the member events that we have coming up, um, well, Troy um, hosts the B2B barbecue. It's the first Sunday of every month except for February, since that is Super Bowl so, Sunday. But we're, we're coming back strong in the spring, folks. March. Yes. Yes. March. 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 <laughs> right to the barbecue. We're gonna march right over to that barbecue. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so March is a March. I hey, so what is? She let me put her on. Camera, <laughs> you need to see these faces. <laughs> I don't have any makeup on. Come on. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yes, March. You're supposed to say you're always beautiful. I didn't get that. Uh, you are always beautiful. Thank you. you always Thank you. Okay. Stunning. So that, that's what we'll measure. Do you remember when we were kids <laughs> and you could? We would watch the Jetsons. And, and the, the mom would wake up and she'd get a phone call, the video call, and she'd put her face on. Yes. So we have, we, have, we, can't, we don't have flying cars Wait yet. A oh, she had yeah, she had the, hand. yeah, she was just like, hey, boop, I need one. Of, looks so good in the morning. Why can't somebody invent that? I just need to be able to, like, a face I can just pick up, put it on, and just be like, oh, hi. Well, they do have the doll now, so if you just put the camera on the doll, the doll's in there. It's like, oh, you look great right now. Oh, great. You. That's all I need. Oh, that's awful. I bet, oh, wow, that's going to be. You know that's going to be coming. People are going to be able to like take your picture and have a doll made exactly like you. What have they been doing? For have they I mean, are? That's what that, that's what Why do you know for. that? They've been doing it for what? I don't know. Strange <laughs> Google, Google tactics and nice. Okay, right. sorry. Back to events. Sorry. So, um, <laughs> and then we were. Hey, there's a tree. There's a. There, sorry. There's a squirrel. There's a tree. That's exciting. Boy, I can't You're even. Right. I can't even get that right. It's I need a face, and I can't get that right. <laughs> Okay, so with our events, um, so we have the B2B barbecue the first Sunday of every month except for February. And then we are also starting a new series of different quote unquote educational um, seminars. Um, and we're trying to do those on the first, or I, and I apologize, I gotta lock this down with my team, but okay. um, it'll be either the first or the second Thursday for members. And uh, like for example, on February 8th, we have a seminar with a tax guy that's coming in, uh, it's going to be an hour long, but they're going to tell you about the new tax code, mm -hmm. what you what to expect. Is that February eighth? February eighth, yeah, and that'll be in our North Hollywood location, and that's for members only. Um, but it's uh, it's free, and it's a chance for members to be able to come in and talk to somebody who knows all about the tax code. And a lot of people don't have their own tax person, yes, you know. Yes, absolutely right. Um, and they don't really know what to expect with with what's coming down the pipe, right? Um, and then we have on, and I'm so excited about this. This is an awesome event. It's Whiskey and Wolves. Ow! Yeah! Ow. That's the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's whiskey and wolves. You didn't have any today. Yeah, no, I didn't. But it's fantastic. So that's right. Yeah. So whiskey and wolves. So we have Clive Maids coming in, and they're a whiskey. They're um, this. Uh, we actually, I tried them for the first time at Santa Anita. They were doing whiskey tasting out there, and I was like, oh. I, and I'm not a whiskey person. I don't drink right. whiskey, but I could drink actually, this. Cats from the. No Trend Podcast. i got to let them know. Hopefully he's in town because they are big. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then we've got... Um, a 22-year-old whiskey guy. Then then I found out that this one woman that I know, she's actually, she runs a nonprofit called Guardians of the Wolves. And so she's going to bring in a couple wolves here during the tasting. So, oh, you know, actual wolves. Yeah. What day is that? Uh, the February 22nd. Yeah, we'll be here. Six to nine. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> What do you mean you won't be, I'll here? be here? I just won't bring my daughter. Yeah, I just won't wear you my. Will see another, you will see another side of me if all of a sudden the wolf is mauling my daughter. Like, oh, yeah, well, just. <laughs> just don't yeah, wear your meat vest. <laughs> my meat vest. <laughs> my meat vest. Mm. Is, that, that is that blood cologne? <laughs> well, it's fantastic. I did no. I went hiking with all brown on and the coyote went behind me. Like, what? Yeah, I'll get to it. Really? I wasn't thinking. No, you weren't. You should have orange on. Where I'm from in Ohio, you do not go hiking with brown on. I, I the brown guy in all brown. The coyote was like, he's on two legs. Yeah. Oh. The coyote was like, can I, can I yeah, take can him? I take can him? I take him down? He literally was behind me. I was like, ah. He's like, <laughs> he's like what are you I was doing? Like, I mean, ah. He's like, okay, okay. Right. He's like, oh, you got me on the second one. Thanks. So we have this Whiskey and Wolves event going on, and we're so excited about that because the proceeds will go to the um, to Guardians of the Wolves, and so members get in for free, but any of their guests um, pay fifteen bucks. It's gonna be two wolves here in Burbank. Yeah, dude, they're like they're like wolf hybrids. Oh, okay, I got you. Well, it's had, like a dog wolf. Yeah, dog wolf. My brother had a. Uh, well, don't downplay it. They're still cool. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant them. Big ass 200 pound wolf. Yeah, like a dire wolf from Games of Thrones. Yes. <laughs> One of those. <laughs> I just said Games Narnia. of. I just said Narnia Games Narnia of Thrones. Wolves. What is wrong with me? Uh, Game of Thrones. I'm sorry. Sorry. I don't want. I don't want your listeners to be like. She doesn't even know what she's talking about. Well, well don't worry. And do she you knows do... when it comes to the coworking space. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That's that's really that's really the whole point. But I do know dire wolves. I'm just gonna say it. No. Yeah. Um, so no. are you going to do, because we talked about this last night, are you going to, going to do, I know you have a members only, but are you going to do any kind of open house again soon? Maybe open house for both locations where people can come in and just do a, maybe for like an hour, a tour, or outside of just an appointment thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> So set up an appointment. I right. never Call did that. 818-823-4717. That's info at themuserooms.com. Muse like in the things that inspire you. Themuserooms.com. T-H-E-M-U-S-E-R-O-O-M-S.com. <laughs> set up your own appointment. Because there will not be an open house. But it's a phenomenal place. No, when did I have an open house? No, I just thought, well, then you do a, you do grand open. But those are invite only as well. Well, no, we well, okay. Well, I joined the chamber, right? right? The Burbank chamber. So they come in and they do like a ribbon cutting for you, and they right. bring in the city and the thing and the. And thing. we're gonna have one with LA Radio now, so stay tuned for that, and that way you can kind of get a sneak in. But you still have to RSVP. You can get a sneak in, like a ninja, drop out of the ceiling. <laughs> you know, you amazing. cannot bring people. That's another thing. If you have an office here, you cannot bring people. I, every time I bring someone in, it's like, oh my goodness. It's like, let me Well, no, don't say that. You can bring people. You just no, said you, you have an bring, office here, you can't bring people. No, you can't bring people in and not take them on a tour. Oh, yeah, of course so, you can't. So, yeah, no, you know, you you have to because people will just be going they like, in. they'll be like, what is that? Right. What is that? Is that a dragon? <laughs> we do have a dragon here, people. We have a dragon room. Yeah, well, it's actually our boardroom. Our boardroom has a 52 by 7 foot um, dragon. It's fantastic. And we, we've used that same artist repeatedly in all of our locations. His name oh, is sorry. his name is Kipto and he's awesome. And the, and they have a courtyard here in Burbank. This oh that's right. B2B2B. So, you see we're so missing all right. this stuff. We're missing all this stuff. <laughs> Nancy Sexton. All right, here's my big thing that I always ask if I'm doing a spotlight interview. If you had a chance, your last chance, you get a chance to talk to 10,000 people it's your last day. Literally, you know that tomorrow you won't be here. You're going on to universal glory. 
Yeah. Last chance to talk to people. Ten I'm leaving bucks. right now to go talk to my husband. No, and, not that. Not that. And not that. That's, that's, that doesn't feel like that. It shouldn't feel like that in the world. <laughs> well, you said it was your last day. Motivational. Oh, you okay. Some motivational to say 10,000 people. What would you tell them? What would you say to them? It's your last opportunity to let them know what your life is about and what you would sum up, like your quad, your four most important things. What would you say to these people? Well, I would say that you get one shot at whatever it is you're doing. Make sure you are doing it to the best of your abilities. Don't complain. Only do what you want to do because being selfish allows you to help everyone else around you. Mm. And own your shit. Don't leave your bags in front of somebody else and expect them to deal with them. To now, Nancy Sexton at the Muse Rooms on Instagram, Twitter, on Twitter too. Twitter, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Facebook, Muse Rooms. You can also find them on uh, the LA Radio Now page at LA Radio Now. If you look on our LinkedIn or look on Troy Rawlings LinkedIn, you'll see information for the Muse Room there today. You'll see Nancy and her her tall. I don't know what color her hair is in that picture. Uh, it <laughs> like was actually it was pinkish. Pink I was blonde. I was going through a pink uh, pink blonde. Pink. And her husband has the whole beard. Looks like a uh, ex member of Doobie Brothers. What? I mean, he's like a Doobie in now. You know, like <laughs> what? how Doobie which Doobie. That Doobie is Doobie. so not true. He does have a little Doobie. He Brothers does look. not. He has, a, he has a musician look like he's going to be like a uh, one of the. Doobie brother, what is he? What is he? Seventy? He has a beard. He has like the perfect beard situation going. <laughs> Even when he shaves it low, it looks like the perfect beard. I can't get that. I get the scraggly thing and then the grays. And Do you ever grow your beard up? Every once in a blue moon. I don't want to be one of those dudes. I don't. I'm not a beard dude. Well, why not? My face starts itching. Oh well, yeah, that happens. Yeah. I mean, some I, I I like a five o'clock or a little seven or eight o'clock. You that. should totally. This is what you should do. You okay. should you should like for the next till like June till it gets really hot. You should just grow it out, not do anything to it, and you just take pictures of it every day until till June, and then just be like, this is what it looks like when I get a beard, because it would be fun. I've done that before. When I you know when I did that when I started realizing I was losing my hair at twenty eight. When I started getting this little, that little, I started saying, let me throw this. I was it's so funny. Do you know what I just thought in my head? Oh my God, you had hair? <laughs> That's what I did. It's Nancy Sexton. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've only ever known you without hair. Yeah.